What's going on everybody, Mortem here, this time bringing you a video about five of my favorite classic games, because after just recently putting a new PC together, I thought what better way to try that PC out than to play games that are pushing 20 years old. But this is actually a video I had made almost two years ago, and in that two years I have played many more games, reviewed many older classic games as well, so I thought I would do a nice refresher list, talking about some things that have changed and some things that have stayed the same. But with no further ado, let's dive into this and talk about them. So first and foremost, we have a newer edition with Gothic 2. Recently, having played through the Gothic series, they all have things about them that I enjoyed a great deal, but Gothic 2, I would say, is really the standout, where Gothic 1 sets up the universe and a lot of the unique mechanics. Gothic 2 really delivers on that system and pushes it to new heights. While the story might be a little less unique, everything else about that game is fantastic, and with the Night of the Raven expansion, you can have even more fun. Though these days, the toughest thing to deal with in terms of Gothic is simply getting the game run which requires a bunch of mods, which thankfully, due to a dedicated community, isn't that bad. And even still, Gothic 2 has a lot of clunky mechanics, much like the first Gothic. However, in spite of all of those troubles, it still manages to be a wonderful game, and I think it's worth taking a look at, even if you never plan on fully finishing it. That, though, brings us to our second entry, with an ever-present classic favorite of mine, which is Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. Beyond just a favorite classic of mine, honestly just one of my favorite games, period, it is a wonderful dive into to the World of Darkness, which includes Vampire the Masquerade, and it remains one of the very few forms of vampires in media that I truly enjoy because it takes a lot of the different stereotypes and tropes about vampires and turns them all into distinct clans, each with their own benefits and curses, and then there's the characters of the game itself that always manage to be especially memorable. And with all of the clans available to you and the choices you can make, it remains to this day a fantastic RPG that even modern day games struggle to replicate, but much like pretty much all the games on this list, you're probably going to want a fan-made community patch to actually make this a more enjoyable experience, as to this day it has many bugs that can cause you quite a few headaches without said patch. With that patch, it's actually a pretty great time. They fixed a lot of stuff, even improved on some aspects here and there, but either way, a great game worthy of your attention. But that brings us to number three on the list, and this is Arcanum of Steamworks and Magic Obscura. Now, in many ways, a lot of the games on this list, I think, were hampered by loftier ambitions than they could fulfill. Well, Arcanum's kind of the opposite of that. If anything, it does a little too much. Could probably stand to reel it in a little bit. But Arcanum sees you in this unique sort of industrial revolution world meets classic fantasy with dwarves, elves, the whole nine yards, and magic and technology are at odds with each other. And while that might be a common enough thing to see these days, Arcanum still manages to do it in a way that feels very unique. The world of Arcanum is truly something to enjoy. But again, you're definitely going to want that community patch because the game is horribly buggy without it. And even with it, parts of the combat can be very clunky. In spite of all that, and a few other issues around the rather terrible UI, the world that Arcanum presents, along with the quests and the lore, I think are so fantastically done that these days, if we could get a sort of modern rendition of Arcanum, or just an isometric CRPG like it with mechanics that, you know, actually mostly work, I would be ecstatic. Easily something that would be number one on my priority list in terms of what to play. But that brings us to number four, which is Divine Divinity, one of several games that eventually led to Divinity Original Sin 2, which most people would be more familiar with. But Divine Divinity, the first game in that series, is truly something special. Despite being their first game, I think it is one of the best. I think for me it goes 
Original Sin 2, Divine Divinity. And while I enjoy a lot of the other Divinity games, I think those two really did something special. But Divine Divinity is an isometric sort of open world for the most part that gives you all sorts of choices and consequences as you try to track down the demon of lies. But it's done in such a fantastic way that leaves it truly open-ended in terms of how you progress and how you get to various places. And even all the way back in this first game, they gave you access to the teleport Porter stones, which could be used to do some truly broken stuff, and while it's far from perfect and certainly suffers from a lot of bugs, it remains one of my favorite games, and I think everybody should play it. Though, to be fair, I am rather enamored with the Divinity universe, so I'm a little bit biased on that one, but... Honestly, Divine Divinity, for the first game in that series, and as old as it is, it's a wonderful time. There are a few game-breaking bugs, though, and there's no community patch for this one, so you just kind of have to learn what to fix with a hex editor if you really want to go that route, or just save plenty. But all of those things can eventually be worked around, and I think doing so is worth it. It is truly a memorable time. But that brings us to the final entry on this list, and it is our ever-present classic Baldur's Gate. Gate 1. With Baldur's Gate 3 roughly right around the corner at this point, like six months out, there is no better time to jump into Baldur's Gate 1, especially with the rather slow month we're going to have up until, I believe, the end of April. But Baldur's Gate 1 is one of the best isometric CRPGs out there, with the main drawback of it these days simply being having to learn the old Advanced Dungeons & Dragons system, which is woefully out of date and rather clunky to use, but if you're willing to do so, you can have a fantastic time in Baldur's Gate 1 as you unravel the story around Strange Iron Shortage, which then leads to bigger and grander things, and personally I've always preferred Baldur's Gate 1 over 2. I prefer the more grounded story story in the first title, and I also enjoy how the world itself flows together much more. It feels like an open world even though it isn't, whereas Baldur's Gate 2 sees you jumping around locations a lot and feels a little disjointed as a result, but ultimately you've probably heard everything there is to hear about Baldur's Gate 1 at this point, and I've done a full review on it myself, so if you want to hear more, check it out, but a fantastic classic game, which brings us to the end of our list. So there are five of my favorite classics even after playing a ton of them. If you enjoyed this little trip down memory lane, I would love to hear about some of your favorite classic games as I'm always looking for more stuff to review. So who knows, I might just get around to covering it on the channel if I like it enough. That is going to do it for today, so I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz, but regardless of any of that, truly, thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.